Benfotiamine is a fat-soluble version of vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 is thiamine, and it's usually water-soluble, but this is more easily absorbed by the body. So vitamin B1 is deficient, especially back in the 1930s during the Great Depression and before, when white bread had no added nutrients. The first nutrient added to food was B1. It took the researchers back then you know, more than 20 years to see that that particular nutrient was needed to prevent beriberi, which actually caused um, congestive heart failure. So kids were dying of heart attacks at the age of 10 and 11 years old. And once they put B1 in bread in 1934, that stopped that. So now keep in mind, in 1940, they knew that there were 50 to 100 B vitamins. And that all that research stopped during because of World War II. So here's a variety of B vitamins that you may have heard of before without really realizing it was a B vitamin. So inositol is vitamin B8. Biotin for the hair is vitamin B7. And niacin is vitamin B3. And the point of taking something like vitamin B1, B7, B3 in a high dose alone is nutraceutical. So niacin in high doses can increase circulation really well. It can detoxify um, toxins out through the skin. Biotin in high doses can help hair growth. Inositol in high doses can help the nervous system and brain function better, especially for uh, sh because of sugar cravings causing depression, ADHD, stuff like that. We sell a product called choline that's vitamin B18. The point of me saying all this about these single B vitamins is that vitamin B1 being one of these single B vitamins, it's a legitimate therapy for certain reasons, uh, purportedly for diabetic neuropathy or um, other nervous system conditions. Now, in, I don't see vitamin B1 as being a long-term product. It's not something you take for five years. When you take it and you have some nervous system uh, problem, nerves take up to three years to heal. So B1 at a higher dose alone for your nervous system is a legitimate therapy, but we're always looking for clinical results. Now I've given people vitamin B1 with no clinical results. And because their nervous system was so damaged, maybe they never fixed their diet up well enough. So again, you have to think holistically, make sure the diet's right. And B vitamins get depleted out of the body because of stress, parasites, sugar, refined uh, carbohydrates. So those things need to be handled. So if you're constantly taking B1 with no good results, you have to look at other causes, other factors that need to be addressed. But you have to think holistically. And you can't think that B1 alone is like the cure-all. And if you want a more complex of B vitamins, there's Cataplex B from Standard Process, Cataplex B Core, Cataplex B2. There's different ways to go about getting all the B vitamins, especially eating liver. Uh, nutritional yeast is a good source of B vitamins. But vitamin B1 is to be supplemented along with addressing the holistic viewpoint of getting all the B vitamins and addressing the causes of why you might be deficient in B vitamins, in particular, vitamin B1.